Hey, Turk. Yeah, babe. You're going to do palm maintenance today, right? Yes, honey. So guys, I'm often asked, how do I do palm maintenance on my pond? Well, since my wife's sending me outside to do palm maintenance today, let me show you. So before we start pond maintenance, it's really important for us to understand what kind of pond we're doing pond maintenance on. Let me show you a little bit about this one. This pond is an ecosystem pond using a biological filter, a mechanical filter, aquatic plants, rocks, gravel, and fish to work with mother nature to keep the maintenance down. I have two different types of biological filtration on this. One is the wetland and the other is a biofalls. When my wife put that plant in, I don't think she realized just quite how big that thing was going to get. It's blocking her waterfall a little bit, but with a little bit of maintenance, we'll be able to see that. But you can see right here, our other biological filter is right there in the back. We also have two mechanical filters here, and there are our skimmer boxes. Here's one here, and our other skimmer is right over here. And that's where our pump is housed. That's where the debris goes. And then when you add rocks, gravel, plants, and fish, we get an ecosystem, and Mother Nature does a really good job of taking care of the pond. However, I have done zero maintenance on this pond in about three and a half weeks, so there are a few things that we can do to make it look better. So whenever we're getting ready to install a new water feature, I'm always asked, how much maintenance is my pond gonna be? My answer is if I spend 10 minutes a week on my pond, it's gonna look great. Like I said, I haven't been out here about three, four weeks. So today, it's gonna to be a little bit more. I'm probably gonna spend about 15, 20 minutes. So let me go over with you what I see that needs to be done. And that's usually my first step, is just do a walk around. First of all, I can see these yellow leaves on some of the plants, as well as on some of the lilies over here. So we know that we're gonna do some, some plant maintenance. I'm gonna fertilize the plants. That's just something that I do about once a month. Because of all the rain we've had and storms and the, the weight of these guys here, uh, this plant has uprooted a tiny bit. Right over here, we got the roots sticking out, and that's the first time that's ever happened. The elephant ears have broken off and they're laying on the ground and need to be cut off. We also got a bloom. Check this bloom out. Not a real big bloom, but pretty cool. I noticed that over here my waterfall is running kind of slow, which tells me my skimmers are going to be full. This one doesn't look too bad at all. So this pump here actually filters my wetland. All right, so as you can see, this skimmer here we're gonna clean as well. But remember I said my waterfall's running slow? And right now I can see why. My skimmer basket's full. There's a plant blocking it, one of the water hyacinths. Nothing skimming because over and through here, all the plants are blocking everything, so the pond's not really skimming very well. So as I'm doing my walk around, I'm getting my ideas of what I want to do so that I can just get started and knock this thing out as quickly as, quickly as possible. All right, so let's go through our checklist of what we're going to need in order to do pond maintenance. First of all, we got a, a truck tub and our bucket here. This is where we're going to float in the pond and put all our debris in. We have a pair of sandals to make things a lot more comfortable. We have some aquatic plant fertilizer. We have a rapid clear flocculant that allows us to clear up the pond a lot faster because we're going to get in there and stir things up and make it all dirty. We have a set of pruners. We have our water treatments, which is our bacteria and our sludge cleaner. We have a hose. We're obviously going to need that. And then we got these gloves here, which my wife used for, uses for pond maintenance. I'm a tough contractor. I don't need those then the two most important things that you definitely need first of all a pair of sunglasses you look way cooler doing palm maintenance and sunglasses than you do without and then the most important you can do this either during or after would be a nice beer so with the cool sunglasses the beer I forgot one more thing my labor Kyle Logan stop playing Fortnite and come here we got pond maintenance to do, guys. Yeah. All right? Yep. All right. 
You don't look excited. Are you excited? Yeah. Yeah. Are you excited because you're going to be on video? Or are you excited because we're doing palm maintenance? Both. Both? Both? Mm -hmm. Are you sure it's not just because of the video? <laughs> Maybe. So, we're ready to get started. Got my helpers. You guys ready to go? Yep. yep. We got our sunglasses? Yep. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is the lilies. What I like to do is take any of the lilies that have bad leaves on them. We're just going to follow the stem all the way to the plant and pinch it off. Pull that out and put it in our bucket. Any of the leaves that are brown have holes in them. You can start taking all those off. You're not going to hurt the plant by taking off too many. In fact, it's just going to improve the growth of the plant. <laughs> oh! Hey guys, the rocks get slippery sometimes. Be careful. Be very careful in the pond. Logan, you alright? Yeah. Give me a thumbs up, buddy. Alright. So the same way that we do the lilies, there's also the flowers that are bad. Right? These, this was the lily blooms. And if I squeeze this, you can see water comes out. This one's done. What we do, again, trace it down, same way we did the other one. Pinch that off. We go in the trash. There's another one. You can see. I squeeze it, water comes out, we know it's bad. Look, if I squeeze one of these, there's no water coming out. Right, you can just feel how done this thing is. So these are done. So the way that I stop having to walk around a lot in the pond is by keeping my bucket with me. This thing floats really nicely here, right over here on top. So when I start moving out away from the edges, I can just keep it with me all the time. Dad, should I pull this one out? Yes, that one. But do you see the way the other ones are hanging down over the rocks? Yeah. That's very natural looking. So we just want to pull off the brown one. I like how the plant's growing over the waterfall. To me, that keeps the water feature looking very nice and natural. Mm -hmm. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to cut back any ugly leaves, bad plants, got a set of pruners. We're just going to go far, as far down as we can. Cut those off. While I'm here, one of the things I love are these lawn alternatives. Look at the way that these plants grow over top the rocks and over top of our patio really gives it a natural look makes it look like it's all one this is also some really tough stuff my dogs walk across it i walk across it my kids are always running and jumping on things look at the size of these elephant ears this is inside of our wetland these plants are just thriving on all these nutrients growing like crazy absolutely awesome i love it but with some of the storm damage and things like that these ones have all fallen down okay so I can either maybe pull some of this out or it might be easier to cut it off. I'm not sure yet. So I'm just gonna give it a little tug, see how it comes. Check out the roots that are just going down into the down into that wetland. This is what's using all those nutrients, doing its job, making sure that our water stays nice and clean. So the way that these skimmers work is that water flows from the pond down through here and into our skimmer basket. But what's going on guys is all this stuff in here is restricting our water flow. So what I need you guys to do is clean that out and I'll clean out the skimmer box. So all those plants, either relocate them or get rid of them. And then we're gonna thin a couple of these other plants out on each side, just so that we have a really nice clean path coming into our, coming into our skimmer. I think these are blocking the skimmer box. What are they called? Water high <laughs> That's right. We put about two or three of them in the pond at the beginning of the season and they just expand like crazy. So the best thing we can do is just take them out and decompose of them. Is I'm going to pull out my skimmer box and my filter mat out of here. We're going to clean these things up and that way uh, we get the water flowing a lot better to the pump. This is something that we recommend doing weekly. So we're going to try and pull these filter mats up as flat as we can in order to catch all of the debris. We're going to clean our filter mat and our basket. I'm gonna dump out all the debris. Clean out the rest with my hands. My wife would be wearing gloves for this part. Then we're gonna hose this off. Better turn the water on. Hose out the basket. I'm hosing it from the outside in. That way everything's just falling out and then we'll clean out the inside a little bit. After the basket's clean, we're just gonna hose off the filter mat. You can see I'm holding it up sideways and you just watch this stuff run right out. 
See how nasty and brown that is? That's all the fish waste. Organic matter from the leaves and stuff like that breaking down. This is why a skimmer or some kind of uh, mechanical filter is so important. We're going to turn it around, make sure we're getting the back side. And you'll literally see the water start to clear up just as you're finishing up. All that muddy water will be gone and it'll just look, it'll look nice and clear again. So now that the water coming out of the hose is good and cold, time for my favorite part. And the hose has been running a while, so it's good and cold, right? Yeah. Is it hot out here today? Yeah. <laughs> Payback. I'm sure I'll be getting paid back here soon. So remember how my waterfall was running a little bit slow? Just because I cleaned out the skimmer doesn't mean that the pump's totally clean. I don't do this every single time I do pump maintenance, but this time I'm going to just to, just to show you how, and I'll tell you about the couple different ways that you can clean off the pump. But the first thing I want you to do, always, is unplug it. A great way to hide the electrical out outlet is fake rocks or stumps. I have two options once the pump is off. I can either reach down and just clean off the front face of the pump, right, just with my hand, which works really well. You can do that. Or the other option is just go ahead and pull the pump out. So in order to pull out the pump, all I'm going to do is unthread the check valve, and then I'm just going to lift the pump right out. So this is the rack that holds the the filter mat that I pulled out. The pump could have came out without that, but it was just easier to, to pull it out at the same time. And we're gonna put it back in at the same time as well. This here, I'm just gonna take a screwdriver, right? And I can pop this right off. And once I pull this off, I'm able to take this and unthread it. And all I'm doing is making sure that there's no debris or junk or anything in here. Remember rule number one, always unplug the pump. So I'm just making sure that there's no, which there wasn't. We've had sticks and frogs and all kinds of nasty stuff get in there before. So I'm just making sure that this is nice and clean and clear. We're gonna take this, just rinse this off with the hose. All pumps are a little bit different. This is the Aquascape pump. We like them a lot, very energy efficient, work out great. So I'm, put, I'm gonna put this back in, we get ready to get back up and running. So the pump's in, we're gonna get the rack nice and flat. I'm gonna put my filter mat back. This cut out here is for that check valve that just threaded the pump back in. We're gonna put that right around there and push this down nice and flat. I'm gonna make sure that there's no rocks in that little tray that I pulled out. Take the skimmer basket and put that right back in. Okay. And we're good to go. We're ready to turn it back on. So make sure that you plug it in exactly how you got it. Then you put, put a fake stump back on it, and you're all good. Hey, Peter, you want to come help? We're doing fun. We're making a YouTube channel. All right, sounds good. Thanks. Even though it's in the garden, I have some weeds along the edge. It's a hot day. It's very comfortable in here. I can just weed right from the edge here compared to trying to get out and bend over. All right, so I'm pretty much done pond maintenance. Only thing we still got to do is put in our fertilizer tabs. Pretty much, you can fertilize any plant, but the ones that I focus on the most are the ones that bloom. Definitely the lilies. So basically, if it's a, if it's a plant with a pot about this big around, I recommend one tab, two tabs, three tabs. Um, so depending on how big the plant is, depends on how many tabs you should put in. So each one of these lilies, I'm gonna put three to five tabs in, and then any of the other plants that bloom flowers, I'll put a tab or two in. So we're gonna go around and we're gonna do that. I have the Aquascape fertilizer tabs. I do this about once a month. All I do is take the tab, push it down into the bottom of the plant, put it in the soil a little bit, and it just slow releases. So we just finished up our pond maintenance. Logan and Peter are gonna put our water treatments in. We're gonna use a flocculant, that's what Logan has, and he's gonna do that so that the water clears up a little bit faster. By tomorrow, this thing will be all clear and looking awesome again, but we got some people coming over tonight and I'd like to see the water a little bit cleaner, a little bit faster. So Logan, go ahead and put a few squirts in there. One pump per 100 gallons. And then we got Peter. He's gonna drop in our bacteria and our sludge cleaner. 
And again, we're putting that right into the skimmer. You can see how immediately it's getting sucked through, heading right for our wetlands and our biofalls. What that does is immediately allows those water treatments to start working and putting them into the right place. It's payback time. Okay. Dad, come here! What's up, guys? Thumbs in this chair. I want to talk to you. What are we talking about? Nice job, guys. Tom looks great. Thanks. Thanks for all the help. Yep. Ah! <laughs> Got you back! If you feel that your water feature is not low maintenance, or you're struggling with it, or you're not having fun, and you're in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Delaware, or Maryland, Give us a call and we'll help you out. If you're in another state, reach out to the Certified Aquascape Contractor Network to find a contractor. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, share, and hit that notification bell. Until next time, keep building that outdoor dream.